Praise be Jesus Christ. Oh man, good. I so I have, I have this image in my mind because uh, so we've been we've been you know the the extra videos with the Holy Day of Obligation, All Saints Day, and uh, and then the normal videos. So it's it's just been a lot of time in the Word, and I just this this idea of you know uh, so the envelopes, right? So I've got there's an envelope right here, right? So this idea of of being enveloped right put into the word of god enveloped with the word you know just this idea of 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 a people who are just simply consumed by the word of god and i've i've been thinking lately just like i said in the last few days because it's you know extra videos and extra time in the word and people having to come to mass you know whether they're watching these videos again or or, or watching these videos or not coming to mass and 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 you know be encouraged to to pursue the Christian life, and uh, sometimes sometimes I I can feel kind of bad because I, I understand you know people are busy and they've got a, lots of stuff going on, um, and it can feel like a lot to expect them or even to simply encourage them to spend more time in the Word or more time with spiritual reading or in prayer you know what whatever it may be, and uh, you know sometimes you can just feel bad about that, but but then every time. It's maybe the Lord or the whole, you know, the Holy Spirit is just inviting me or reminding me like, no, actually, this is, this is the important thing. Um, it, yeah, people, people might be very busy, but, but if they're very busy and they're not making time for this kind of thing, then, then that's actually problematic. Uh, and so to invite them and to continue to encourage them and challenge them even is actually a really good thing because, because it's this image of, of drawing people forward. You know, it kind of goes back to our gospel passage from the last video. You know, the the one of the reasons a person chooses to embrace a life of celibacy is to call people to to witness to the kingdom uh, in heaven. There is no marriage, and so for a person who chooses to not be married here on earth, it's it's ultimately a witness of the life that is to come, which we can so easily forget about. Even people living celibate lives, so. Anyway, just, maybe maybe some encouragement that I received from the Lord, and, and hopefully can pass it on from you, uh, pass it on to you, uh, to just like persevere. And, and we're actually going to get into this, so I think that leads right into our reading. But first, we got to pray, um, just to to invite the Lord in to be with us and to enlighten our minds. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. <clears throat> oh Lord, we thank you for this great life that you invite us to share in with you. Uh, we thank you for everything, every grace, every visible and invisible way that you have been at work in our lives, saving us, leading us to perfection, lead a, leading us into virtue. We ask for your blessing, uh, your blessing in this time that our minds can be enlightened, blessing in our lives, that our lives can be uh, led toward eternity, eternal life, resurrection to life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit in every way. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, we're still in Second uh, Thessalonians. And uh, we will be this week, we were last week, and we will be uh, next week. And then and then we've got a special feast day coming up. Uh, the Solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Universe. Big, big feast day. But for now, let's stay, let's stay in the Word here. So 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 16 through chapter 3, verse 5. So just the last couple of verses of chapter 2 and then the first few verses of chapter 3. Uh, good, it's, it's, it's a good uh, letter, I think. I, I, I like all of St. Paul's letters. Um, but anyway, let's, let's read it. So 2 Thessalonians 2, 16 through 3, 5. Paul says this, May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting encouragement and good hope through his grace, encourage your hearts and strengthen them in every good deed and word. Finally, brothers and sisters, pray for us, so that the word of God, the Lord may speed forward and be glorified, as it did among you, and that we may be delivered from perverse and wicked people, for not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. We are confident of you in the Lord that what we instruct you 
you both are doing and will continue to do. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the endurance of Christ. Okay, beautiful. Let's let's see what we got going on here. So, um, so right before this, uh, verse 16, just to take a little peek at verse 15. So Paul finishes a thought and then and then he goes into a prayer. So the thought is is an encouragement uh, to to the Thessalonians. In fact, verse 13. Uh, yeah, just maybe that whole paragraph, right? We ought to give thanks to God for you always, brothers loved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief and truth. To this end, he has also called you through our gospel to possess the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Just think about that for a minute. Just think about that for a minute. He's saying, we got to give thanks to God for you because he chose you as the first fruits for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit. In other words, he's saying, we, we, got, we, got, to, we got to look at all this in perspective. God has chosen you, Thessalonians, as the first generation of Christians, the first people, among the first people who are going to believe in his son Jesus, which is incredible. And, and, and in doing that, in choosing you, right, he's called you through the gospel to possess the glory of of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just think about that for a minute. This is something I think we, we, we maybe don't stress enough. I, I, I try to stress it a lot. And so maybe some people who, who are, you know, my parishioners or something might, might think, think, Father, you talk about this all the time. But I think in general, we, we, we don't talk about it a lot, is that our God's goal for our life, for my life and for yours, is to share the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. So think about Jesus in his glory. Jesus, who has always existed, the eternal word. He's always existed. And he comes to earth, he takes on our human nature. He dies, but then he rises from the dead. He ascends into heaven to sit at God's right hand, at the Father's right hand, in glory. And you and I are called to share in that glory, to sit at the right hand of the Father, in Christ. It, it's it's mind-boggling in, 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 in many ways. So I, I think just, so then what does he say? So therefore stand firm and hold fast to the traditions that you were taught, either by an oral statement or by a letter of ours. Right? So in other words, we have, we have the possession of glory at our fingertips. And so therefore stand firm and hold fast to the traditions that you were taught, right? Everything that you've learned in Christ, whether, whether by word, right? Things that I've written to you, Paul is saying, or uh, by oral statement, the things that you've that you've been taught that maybe I haven't written to you in words, right? So the oral tradition actually is this is where we get one of the places as Catholic Christians that we talk about the incredible importance of the oral tradition, uh, as well as the Word of God, right? We, we don't diminish the Word of God by any means. So anyway, so so then Paul goes into this this prayer, right? So may the Lord Jesus Christ Himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting encouragement and good hope through His grace, encourage your hearts and strengthen them in every good deed and word. Right, so, so Paul is, is saying like, okay, this, this is our call, the hope of glory. And so therefore we got to stand firm. But part of our standing firm in, in what we believe and what we're taught is, is the Lord giving us grace, giving us hope and encouragement and strength so that we can go about living in word and in deed. Right, so this is, this is just a, another very real part of, of the Christian life that it's, it's not just about what I say. It is about what I say, but not just that. It's about what I say and what I do, right? I want to be strengthened in every good deed and word. If my actions, my behaviors don't match up with my words, then that's problematic. Instead, we, we want full integration of the Christian gospel in our lives, in what we say, really in what we think as well, and in what we do. And so for that, we need the Lord to strengthen us, to, to build us up in this. This is like the, the pursuit of virtue, right? Virtue is, is, it's a really good thing. We know this, to, to live a good and excellent life. But we also know because of our inclination towards sin that it's hard, it's difficult. And so while we want to pursue virtue, we also need to recognize that we need God's help with that. Uh, and so we ask the Lord to do that. Okay, so then, then Paul goes on. Finally, brothers and sisters, pray for us so that the word of the Lord may, may speed forward and be glorified as it did among you. So Paul, right? 
pray for us so that the word so that there, there must be some resistance uh and of course we know this that that the enemy the devil the the satan the accuser and divider he doesn't want the word of god to speed forward he doesn't want the word of god to be effective in the hearts of men and women who hear it uh, and so he's going to do what he can to, to block that, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's what Jesus says the enemy wants to do. Uh, and so pray for us so that the word of the Lord may, may speed forward and be glorified. So somehow our prayers can assist those who are missionaries for the gospel. And so we pray for missionaries. And then maybe, I think this maybe isn't, isn't necessarily in what Paul is in, uh, including here, but, but this is a very real thing too, is that, that somehow we can assist the word of the Lord speeding forward by our own receptivity and maybe by sharing it ourselves. But nonetheless, Paul here is a missionary apostle, right? And so to pray for, for him and to pray for those who are with him so that they may be more effective. And so I think, I think we can do the same thing with missionaries today. You know, to pray for missionaries as they go about preaching and teaching, uh, that the Lord may grant them uh, success and faithfulness to the gospel. Okay, so, so and that we may be delivered from perverse and wicked people, for not all have faith, right? And we all know this, that this, this is a real thing, that, that not all people who hear the gospel, not all people who are encouraged or, or invited to a relationship with Jesus actually embrace that relationship. I know, I know in my life, uh, the first part of my life, I, I didn't have any desire to have a real relationship with Jesus. I didn't have any desire um, to, to, to live my life for him to hear the word of the Lord and to let it change me. Maybe, maybe I would have said that I was a Christian, but I, I wasn't, I wasn't living that way. I didn't have real faith, you know? And, and so we, we know this, but, but somehow about our prayers, this can aid people to come to actually have faith. It can aid people to hear the word, to let the word be effective in their lives, uh, in, in the preaching and in the reception of it. Anyway, so then he says, but the Lord is faithful, right? So not all people are faithful, but the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one, right? If we remain with the Lord, he is faithful to us. And so he won't let us down. He won't, he won't deny us. Um, and so he's going to strengthen us and guard us. He's going to help us in that pursuit of, of good deeds and in good words. We're confident of you in the Lord that what we instruct you, you both are doing and will continue to do, right? We're confident of this. So if, if you remember, um, if you remember the, the previous uh, reading from last week, Paul was, was referencing that someone came in and, and or it seemed like maybe someone wrote a letter uh, in their name that wasn't really from them and it, it pr promoted a false gospel. It promoted some false ideas about the gospel. Or maybe some people came into Thessalonica and, and taught something that was not true. Uh, and Paul, remember, was writing them like, no, 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 don't, don't believe them. Don't, don't let yourself be suddenly shaken out of your mind. Uh, but instead, remain firm in the Lord. And so now Paul is, is saying, he's kind of reiterating that. We're confident in you, actually. Because in 1 Thessalonians, he, he receives this really incredible, this really good report that the Thessalonians received the gospel after such a short time with Paul. They received the gospel and they're, they're living it. And so now Paul is just sort of reiterating that. Like, these people are coming in, they're teaching a false false things, but we're confident in you, right? We, we, we trust that, that what you're doing, you're going to continue to do based off of what we instructed you and not off of what the false teachers are instructing you. So he's, it's just like a good affirmation, you know, from a spiritual father to, to his children. Like, we're confident that, that you know how to act, that you know the truth of the gospel. But at the same time, may the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God, right? So we're, we're confident of this, but we also know human nature. And so we just continue to commend you to the Lord, to pray for you and ask the Lord to, to bless you and, and direct your hearts to the love of God and to the endurance of Christ. This, this line to me, uh, this, this last little phrase, to the endurance of Christ, to me, I think this actually kind of brings in all of our readings for this week because... What is, what is the endurance of Christ? Well, if you go back to our gospel, remember Christ was being mocked. These people came, the Sadducees came to him to mock him, to, to test him, to try to catch him in his words. And this happens to Jesus regularly throughout the gospel. And, and I just, I think about, you know, a person I think can go through that, that sort of patronizing, dismissive, mocking disposition that from people, a person can go through that a couple of times, but to go through it over and over and over again, it can just kind of wear a person down. And yet Jesus was able to endure that. And then similarly, you know, you think of the entire passion that he had to undergo, right? Beginning with the agony in the garden, uh, 
you know, the incredible suffering and then the scourging, right? The scourging over and over, being whipped and, and crowned with thorns and being mocked by the soldiers and on the cross and people wagging their heads at him and taunting him. And, and he was able to endure all of that. And it's just incredible endurance. And, and going back to the Maccabees, right? That family, uh, the mother especially, who had to watch her sons one by one by one, uh, being tortured and murdered. And, and at the very end, we didn't get in our reading, but at the very end, she herself was was encouraging her final son to, to remain faithful. And so you just think of the endurance that she had to, to have in order to watch her, her children all suffer and die in such brutal ways. Right? And so, so, the Lord, so Paul is saying, may the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the endurance of Christ and to all of those who have, who have given their lives for the sake of following God's commands. That, that kind of endurance, may the Lord grant, grant you that endurance. And I think for us, we've we got to pray for the same endurance for ourselves uh, as we live in a world that is, that is trying to sway us from following the gospel. Um, so anyway, may the Lord grant that for, for, for me. May he grant that for you as well. Uh, as we continue to engage the word, to let ourselves be enveloped by the word of God, by the grace of God, the goodness of God, uh, to live lives of virtue and uh, persevere um, in, in the gospel, in faithfulness to the Lord. All right. God bless you guys. I hope you enjoy Sunday Mass coming up, and uh, I, I'll look forward to seeing you next week. All right. God bless you.